What's up? Today I'm excited to share with you the most common errors in the Rui Lopez opening, which is the most classical chess opening. It's played by all the top players, uh, often with both colors, and of course a lot of amateur players play just as well. So here's the starting position of the Rui Lopez opening. You've probably seen it many times in your own games. And here there are basically two main options for black. The classical approach is playing pawn a6, and there is also a more modern, fashionable line starting off with the knight of six, known as the Berlin defense. And we're going to kind of cover both of them, and in both cases we have some unpleasant surprises for your opponent. Let's start from a more fashionable line, knight of six. Since Kramnik used it in his world championship match against Kasparov, and he won that match, a lot of players started to repeat this opening variation, thinking that it's really good for black. What are you going to do here? Well, first of all, you castle, just as always, and after that, black goes for knight takes e4, and here, the main line goes after pawn d4, and that leads to a very complicated uh, position, but often it actually transposes in a forced way in a dry endgame. And for that reason, let's put this aside and let's play a more interesting move, rook to e1. Now, the purpose of this move is pretty clear. We're putting a strong pressure along the e-file against a number of black pieces. So since the knight on e4 is attacked, that's the most direct threat that black has to respond to. What can black do now? Well, usually they move their knight back. Playing pawn d5 and supporting the knight that way is just way too dangerous because it also opens up this pain in addition to the pressure that white exerts along the d-file. And in this variation, if, if they play pawn d5, then you just play pawn d3, kick this knight off, and when it goes back somewhere, does it really matter? You take knight x e5 and basically you win. There is just way too many threats here along all these files and diagonals and like already is defenseless. Now, so let's come back to the main line. It is more common for black to just move their knight back and in addition to that, it also hits this bishop on b5 and therefore white needs to do something about that. But for, for the moment we do not have to react, we can instead just take here on e5. And that already sets a first little trap along the way. If black actually proceeds to capture this bishop, it fails to this discover check to black's king and we're winning the queen over there on d8. So that's the first way for you to win. But this is a more or less common stuff. Now we're gonna be going over a lot more interesting options. Now normally black will take here on e5, that's a lot better option. And in this case there is clearly the move rook takes e5 and this is the main line. But there is also another option, which is a little bit trickier, and I'd love to suggest it to you for that reason. It's the move knight to c3. We're kind of ignoring this knight for a second, and although usually it will just transpose into the main line, there are also a couple sideways for black to go wrong and to lose the game in a spectacular way. So, first of all, black may decide to take this bishop right now, and it looks like a perfectly fine, very natural move to play for black, to just, you know, release the pressure and trade off some pieces. But after knight takes b5, it's actually a losing mistake, and it loses in a really spectacular fashion. Instead of recapturing here, we trade here on e5. Take its check to the king, therefore bishop e7 is forced to cover it, and now once again, instead of capturing the knight, we ignore it, and we go into the center of knight d5. So all of a sudden, we're actually creating strong threats against Black's king. And it's already not easy for Black to parry. If Black does like nothing really, then you're just gonna really grab this bishop with either a rook or a knight. And uh, for that reason, by the way, if Black goes pawn d6, for example, then after rook take, takes e7 and king to f8, there is one thing that you gotta be careful of. Although Black's king is dangerous and all that stuff, you gotta be really careful about this rook, because I've seen people achieving this winning position and then mess up with this rook, you know, because it's a little bit shaky, and if you don't defend it well enough, you can actually end up losing some material. So the easiest solution for white is just to move your rook all the way back to safety, right? So that you don't have to worry about this, you cannot possibly blunder anything, and black is left with this centralized king, and you have an easy long-term attack against it. But of course, the most natural move for black in order to put their king to safety and to parry this threat would be to simply castle, and that's what most of your opponents will do. Now, knight takes e7, check to the king, king h8 is forced, and in this position there are basically two ways to win. One is just a trivial, knight takes c8, and on the next move rook takes b5, and you end up with an extra piece. And as if that's not good enough, there is another way, which is even stronger. It's to play queen h5, and here you're going after an immediate checkmate, and it's a really cool thing. 
If black does any move, like move their knight away or play pawn d6, any move, you've got a really sudden checkmate in threat. Queen takes h7, not h6, queen takes h7, and all of a sudden it's a checkmate. And nobody really expected you to deliver a checkmate with such limited forces, just a knight and a rook. And yet this knight takes away these two squares, and the rook is delivering check, so yeah, it's actually a checkmate. Even if your opponent is smart enough to notice the threat, there is actually nothing black can do against it anyway, because first of all, hey, those pieces are still hanging. If black goes pawn g6, giving some breathing space to the king, there is queen h4 coming back, and it creates another checkmate in threat that your opponents will usually overlook. And they'll again play knight d6 or pawn d6, caring about those hanging pieces, and will overlook that there is just queen f6 and that it is actually a checkmate, because the knight is controlling this square. So that's another cool way. And again, even if here your opponent notices the threat and plays pawn f6, that still loses after knight takes g6, check to the king using this pin along the h file. So wh wh whatever black does, you know, he's really suffering really, really badly. Now we're gonna take the rook, we're gonna pick up this knight, and it's completely destroying black. Okay, so we've just figured out that a natural looking move knight takes b5 is a bad mistake of black, and you can just destroy black completely right after that. Another way for black would be to try defending this knight, because since you didn't take it on the previous move, black may think, hey, why not to just defend it? Let's play pawn of six, let's make white suffer for, you know, trying to get the material back, because currently black is a piece up. So, what do you do now? Well, you just go pawn d4, of course, because of this pin, you want to get the knight back, because it's pinned down to the king, it can't move, and it starts off a really, really cool variation, one of the most satisfying ways to win for you would be exactly this. Now, wh what can black do? Well, probably they're gonna take here, expecting you to recapture, but you just take here on e5, you wanna open up this e-file and attack the king. Black takes here on c3 now, once again expecting you to recapture, but you still ignore this knight. Pawn takes f6. This time it's a discovered check to the king. Therefore, the king has to move, and again, your pawn thinks that, okay, finally you're gonna take here, but you still completely ignore this knight. I feel that the knight may be actually a bit depressed, because everyone really ignores him today. So, pawn takes g7. You're willing to sacrifice your queen because you're ready to take here the rook and not only grab the rook but also to promote a new queen. And that's just way too much for black to handle, so black is gonna take here. And once again you don't take here. You just go after the king attack. You play queen h5 check, check to the king, goes back, now bishop g5, and you can see that your pressure is just way too strong here. You attack along all these diagonals and yeah, black is defenseless. The only way to save the queen would be playing bishop to f6. Now you play bishop h6, check. The king has to stand there, because if it goes to g8, it loses to rook e8. I mean, you don't even have to remember these variations, because, you know, it's pretty easy. Just move forward, and you attack, and you deliver checks. That's all you do here, really. Now, instead of bush going king g8, bishop g7 is more natural looking move, and it actually looks like Hey, the situation remains to be unclear, but there is a very sophisticated way to win. It's the move queen to e5. And yeah, I really wish that you win a couple games that way, because that is really satisfying. Now, queen e5 uses this double pin to the bishop, and the bishop is completely paralyzed. Now, it can't move away because it's pinned down to the king. And if it takes here, then it like, just loses everything. It loses the rook, then loses the queen thanks to this check, and it's game over. Instead, your opponents will notice that it's attack and will just defend it playing rook g8. And now all of a sudden there is checkmate here after queen f5. It's a linear checkmate delivered by the queen and rook in a very original manner. I mean, there was queen f6 to delay it for one more move, but now after queen takes, that is checkmate. All right, just a quick reminder that we're still going over the Berlin defense, knight to f6, and by the way, if you aren't familiar with the Rue Lopez opening or the first moves and why these are the main moves, I've got another video which I've just published recently explaining everything about the Rue Lopez in details, and I do recommend that you check this out. Now, we're just going over the main line castles, knight takes over here on e4, rook to e1, attacking this knight, and goes back and tries to attack the bishop, but we instead open up the e-file. Now, to re knight recaptures, instead of taking immediately, we play a more tricky move, knight to c3. Now this is indeed trickier because black has a number of ways to lose the game immediately in a very nice way. So first is knight x b5, allows you to just destroy black along the e-file. f6 was 
um, you know, an attempt of black to keep up the material, but it also lost along the e-file, you know, and that variation was really deadly. So finally, what's the right way for black? The right way is just playing bishop e7. It's a modest but really solid move which well defends the king. And after that, well, you gotta just take this knight and go back to the main line. So rook takes. What can black do? Well, we already know that knight, knight d5 threat is a big thing for black. So black has to castle right away. If not, you just go knight d5 and you win. Therefore, castling is a must for black. And now, this bishop is also under the attack of the knight, although, of course, it is defended, but ideally you do not want to defend this bishop, it's a strong piece, while this knight on d6 is awkward, it blocks this pawn, it can go forward. So we do want to save the bishop, and for that reason we play bishop to d3, which is also a non-orthodox move, because, again, it blocks this pawn, but it has a very specific idea in mind. You're targeting this pawn, and you have some really, really interesting things in mind. So, first of all, what can black do now? The knight d5 is actually still annoying. Even though black castled, knight d5 would still attack this bishop twice and would put some unpleasant pressure. For that reason, black usually goes bishop f6 to just, you know, put this bishop to a more active square and to push your rook away. But you drop it back to e3, because from here you're ready to lift it somewhere to the king side, you know, and possibly join the attack over there. And actually, black needs to be really careful. For example, if they decide to develop their bishop you know, by playing b6 and can it that way, because, you know, d6 is blocked, so if black tries, let's say, pawn b6 or any other, like, just, just random move, then you've got a winning combo. So that's another common tactics for black to fail. Special takes h7, opening up the king, now queen h5, check to the king, is forced to go back, and now rook to h3. And you're ready to deliver either queen h7 or queen h8 checkmate on the next move, regardless of what black does. For example, if g6 is played, trying to cover this square, it still does not cover this square. So, queen h7 is a checkmate. And what's funny about this line is that even title players are missing this combo because it's kind of unexpected. So far, there was just a more or less normal opening line, but all of a sudden, bishop takes h7, boom, boom, checkmate. Now, of course, it can't be all that bad for black. There must be a correct way. So, the main move, the most, or at least the most played move here in this position by black, is not the move b6, which overlooks this combo, but the move rook to e8. And in this case, it does stop the combo because the rook is ready, you know, if, if, all, if, if you shift all your pieces to the king side, there will be the back rank at the end of the line. So it stops the combo. But after that, you can just go back to playing normal chess. And you play knight d5. This move is, as you can see, is a common move. It's annoying for black in multiple different variations of uh, Rui Lopez opening, particularly the Berlin defense. We're putting pressure here, maybe here a little bit, and, you know, you're ready to maybe take here and then somewhere here or here. It feels unpleasant for black, and black usually captures here on e3. And it's good for you, because so far this bishop was locked there behind the pawn, but now you can move this pawn forward and give some more, you know, space for your pieces. Also, it's hard for black to develop these queenside pieces. Black usually goes pawn c6 trying to get rid of this knight. Now you got two bishops advantage, queen takes. And although you don't win immediately, there is no winning tactics here, but overall you have a strategically very good position. You've got two bishops, you can play queen h5, maybe going after this pawn, or just pawn e4, you know, develop, you can go queen e2, push the pawn forward, you know, you've got two bishops, this knight is awkward, those pieces are passive, you control the center, life's great. So far we've discussed the trendy line, knight f6, the Berlin defense. What if your opponent goes for the most classical Rue Lopez with move pawn e6? In this case, we also have an unpleasant surprise for your opponent. Initially, we play bishop a4, knight f6, all standard moves, but now the main move is casting for white here, but instead you play queen e2. That's the move that I enjoy playing, it drags your opponent out of his or her opening knowledge, and usually they go wrong right out of the gate. So after queen e2, your opponents often start getting worried about, you know, their e5 pawn that maybe you're gonna capture it, and black plays pawn b5. Bishop goes here, b3, black develops, bishop e7, and black expects to just castle and play normal chess. But you play a4, challenging black on the queen side right away. It is actually a, a big threat, black cannot ignore it, because it also opens up the a file for your rook. For example, if black castles, or just plays any indifferent move, then you literally take right here, and black cannot recapture, because that would lose the rook. Therefore, black's pawn is pinned, and that is a really big threat for black. So now let's take it back. Therefore, after a4, you're kind of putting pressure onto this pawn, feels unpleasant, and black plays pawn b4. That's the most played move here. Now, once again, you don't let black in easy life, you play pawn d4. 
Now, this time you challenge black right in the center of the board. And what can black do now? Well, this pawn is under the attack. Taking here on d4 does not look good for black because that allows pushing the pawn to e5. Now, this knight has to go and where it can go. This square is taken away by the bishop, so it can go there. This square is taken away by the queen, it can't go here either. If the knight goes back to g8, well, then it's just underdeveloping a knight. Black can't castle anymore and they're completely stuck and paralyzed. So that's not good. If knight comes forward to g4, you can kick this knight away easily by playing either pawn h3 or even better queen e4, attacking it with a queen and simultaneously putting your queen to a more active square. Now the knight is attacked, now it has nothing to do but to, to be moved back. Now you can disrupt black's pawn structure and actually black's position is completely ruined. You know, the, the king side is opened up, black can't really castle there, it's too dangerous. Staying in the center is equally bad. You know, all these pawns are weak, this pawn on d4 is weak. Uh, you can go bishop d5, put pressure along this diagonal, you can, I mean, white has everything and black has nothing really. Now let me show you the juiciest part of this video, the statistics about the Ruy Lopez opening. After we just played bishop to b5, the most played move, you can see the statistics over here in the bottom right corner, the top choice is pawn a6. Play bishop a4, again the main line by 4 is knight of 6. Now instead of casting or other casual moves, you play queen e2. A more offbeat opening variations that your opponents probably are unaware of. Now, as you can see, the main move by four is pawn b5, you play bishop b3, once again, the majority of players play bishop e7, and now you play pawn a4, putting pressure on this pawn. Most of your opponents will play pawn b4, and you challenge them in the center by d4, and you can see that the success rate of white here is 74%, which is crazy. So pawn e4, most of your opponents will play pawn d6, so we're still going over most played moves of black, and here pawn d6, Although standard moves, a standard move in other positions, in this case, it's just drawn after queen c4, it attacks the knight as well as this pawn on f7, and there is no defense for black. So basically it's kind of like scholars checkmate. As you can see, in most cases they just give up the knight, they simply castle, letting you to grab this knight, but then you're simply a piece up, completely winning position. If black tries to do anything else, knight takes d4 for example, then just queen takes f7, it's almost scholars checkmate. King goes here to d7, but of course with such a vulnerable king, you're gonna win very easily. You take here, and you can win a different way, but this, the easiest is bishop e6, king c to c6, and then bishop d5 check. In this case, you're also attacking this rook, and on the next move you're gonna capture it, either by bishop or if they decide to trade. Okay, you take and then you take it by the queen, and in addition to black's vulnerable king, you'll be also a rook up, and that should be enough to win. Of course, I do understand that it may be difficult to remember all these variations after just watching this video once, but you don't really need to. I never recommend that you rely on pure memorization of opening variations. Instead, it's much better to learn how to think properly so that you know how to find attacking moves on your own. And then these opening videos will be just a little bit of an assistance for you, but you won't have to rely on them solely. And so if you wish to learn those proper attacking methods, then you may study my free masterclass, The Best Way to Improve Chess, instantly by clicking the link over there. Either way, keep crushing. Talk soon. Ciao.